Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. My name is Brian, and today we're going to be in Joshua 6. So what a great day to give thanks and glory to God during this Advent season. Prior to this, we know the Israelites were freed from slavery and guided by Moses. After Moses' death, Joshua was commanded to lead Israel. So after 400 years of slavery and then 40 years of wandering in the desert, God's people began instituting the laws again, like circumcision to name one, and celebrating the Passovers. The Israelites were lamenting and giving thanks to the Lord. They were getting their hearts right before God. So God is saying, you are a people under me in a land I promised, and from this day forward, which I promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Since we now have the full revelation through Jesus, we can now have faith in our Lord and Savior. So the city of Jericho was the first obstacle from man's point of view, but not from God's. Jericho was securely closed off and the walls were fortified. Not just one wall, but two massive fortified walls. So it is safe to say that Jericho was on full alert from a human perspective, if not an impossible battle. Yet from God's sovereign view, the battle was already over because he had to say to Joshua, I have in the past tense given Jericho into your hands. So the city of Jericho generally would have been uh, confident against invaders like this, but not now. So up to this point, everything in, in God had promised to Israel was about to take place. So the Canaanites must be driven out if Israel is to occupy what God had promised them. So Jericho was not a large city, but it was one of the most remarkable barricade cities in the Bible and discovered by archaeology. If the Israelites can defeat Jericho, they could defeat any other army facing them. What is critically important is that the wisdom of God as opposed to just human wisdom. Instructions were to uh, you shall march around the city. The method of warfare was one that made absolutely no sense according to military intelligence, so it required total dependence on God. It required great faith from Joshua because he had to explain and lead the nation in this plan. Joshua instructs his people to take up the Ark of the Covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, proceed and march around the city and let him who is armed advance before the Ark of the Lord. So the Ark of the Covenant, which symbolizes eternal life, was a piece of manna food from the provided uh, from God while in the desert. It was Aaron's rod as Jesus' eternal priestly authority and the tablets of the law as the lawgiver himself. So the ceremony of the Ark described in Joshua 6 creates a sacred possession into the Promised Land. So God's people participate, but it's God's divine work that will bring down the defenses of the enemy and allow no obstacle to withstand the onward movement into their divine inheritance. They had to keep their hearts and minds on the Lord who was always present with them, instead of putting their hearts and minds on the difficulty of the task in front of them. This march took place over a period of seven days and we can see God's sovereign grace and his power and not just on human work. So in the end, the command to shout for the Lord has given you this city. This command was given to the people, a recognition that God would now give them what he had promised. The Lord had given you the city. We must take note that the victory belonged to the Lord with the responsibility from God given to them. The people's role was important. It is interesting that God's designed this plan and many others like this. Success can only be attributed to God's power. So as with Joshua, we also must walk the road of obedience and have faith with trusting God in all circumstances no matter what season we are in. Joshua had obedient faith in God. But with those of us who follow Jesus and know he came to live as God in the flesh, took the punishment for our sins and conquered by conquering death for us, so now by faith we can live in relationship with our Creator. It was clear that God gave but that Israel had to take by being obedient and having persistent faith. This Advent season, something we can all take away and remember is that we already have victory as a Christian all to God's glory. God provided a way for us to have forgiveness by giving his son to die for our sins. So Jericho was in God's plan to give the promised land in which the Messiah ultimately came into the world through God's chosen people. So thank you for sending your son to die for our sins so we can have forgiveness and can live in a way to show love to all people and glorify you in all that we do. Thank you so much for joining me in this uh, Advent season uh, through Joshua 6. I just pray that you have a, a blessed Christmas, a blessed day, and may God bless you all.